Hi, I'm Steve Smith. A warm welcome to the channel and this video focusing on Glaswegian great Jim Mullen. Whether funking it up with the Morrissey Mullen band or swinging hard with countless others, that Mullen vibe is unmistakable and makes him one of my favourite players. I've loved and admired Jim's playing for years and this solo taken from a live performance at the 1998 Bern International Jazz Festival is often cited as a particularly good example of Jim's improvisatory craft and therefore a great place to start to explore Jim's voice. Over the past few months I've spent a fair amount of time trying to assimilate Jim's method, learning to use the thumb the way he does and trying to find the relationship between his technique and his sound. His lines are always so melodic and vocal in quality the range of the meditation solo, for instance, is mostly within an octave and a half and extends occasionally beyond that to heighten or release tension. I had a go at recording this a couple of months ago when it was still very much a work in progress. I'd give myself a C minus. I think I'm about a B, solid B, B plus now, so we're heading in the right direction. Let's look at a few of the broad concepts that Jim employs in the solo before we launch into the full analysis. There are lots of bebop style four note patterns which in Jim's hands always contain a legato. very characteristic idea I've called the seventh of Jim. That is lines constructed around a minor seventh interval but inferring the minor ninth with the chord below. So bridging F minor seven to B flat seventh is bridging F sharp minor to B seven And in G minor, but over an E minor 7 flat 5 below. There are some instances of parallel melodic thirds, sometimes obvious and sometimes embedded within other lines. Plenty of drop two triadic phrases, um, usually in C major. And chromatic neighbors around chord terms, in this case, D minor seven. Plenty of pedalled um, tones as well. Likely along with most players of the jazz box, I would normally string my instruments with flat wounds. As Jim maintains, flats don't really work with the thumb as they lack the necessary tonal presence. Round wound is therefore the way to go. After some trial and error, I came across these MYXLs with a wound third. I'm not supported by Didario, but have merely found that these have worked best so far. A word about the arrangement. Apart from the feel and key differences, the A7 sus to A7 has become a 2-5 change. There's an extra chord 4, and a median is often subbed for a tonic chord, allowing for more cyclic fifth movement. The composer is Antonio Carlos Schilbeam. The tune is Meditation. The original meditative bossa nova has become a souped up samba. to look at the solo in eight bar sections, analysis followed by an under tempo playthrough. 
Jim's solos are usually well decorated with quotes. If you recognize any, please post in the comments. The B-flat pickup into bar seven takes us out of the quote into an A dominant diminished arpeggio, the root A being the fifth of D minor over the bar line. Last three eighth note pickup, including ghost note, leads to the first iteration of a bebop type four note figure, hereafter known as figure A. This is one of Jim's go to licks here and elsewhere. It's used predominantly in the minor, occasionally major, and once in diminished form. The next phrase, I think, starts on the C with the lowered seventh and sixth used as approaches to the G which is the crucial target note used to straddle the F minor change. Later on, Jim similarly uses G sharp as the target tone when bridging the F sharp minor change. The next phrase could thus be viewed as being on G Phrygian. A drop two voiced C7 sus4 figure follows. Bar 15 contains two bebop figure A's in A minor and D minor. Bar 16 is dominant diminished flavoured with a couple of chromatic enclosures. The bar 17 G pentatonic figure creates a major 9 sound over the C. Parallel melodic thirds in the next bar suggest G to C harmony, echoed partially at the octave, which then encloses a descending dominant diminished scale on C. The two and three note figures that follow, essentially around a tonic chord and later a thirteenth with the inclusion of the B flat and D, create a bit of drama in breaking up the previous continuous eighth note movement. Bars 24 to 26 are C pentatonic based with chromatic passing notes and a wee bit of pedalling. Phrase from the previous bar is continued into this section until the second half of bar 26. We then get a position shift and melodic thirds overlapping two bars of bebop A figures, including a retrograde, B, and another four note figure suggesting a little left Dorian. Although the next phrase is on A altered dominant, I love the way Jim starts on a drop to C minor shape. Therefore, the F major bebop figure ending up at the 7th E is really D minor 9. Bars 32 and 3, quote alert. At any rate, the line circumnavigates the tonic C as the harmony shifts to F. Triplet approach to target note G and the first instance of the seventh of Jim. At every turn, Jim's soloing shows great melody writing form. The seventh of Jim demonstrates this beautifully. Thus, after a large intervallic jump, it is necessary to resolve inside the interval when approaching from above or below. We get some melodic thirds overlapping with two bebop group A's on A minor and D minor. Pick up into bar 38, landing on the B flat as before alludes to a dominant diminished. The parallel melodic thirds B flat to G and B to G sharp continue into bar 40, A to C, which are embedded within a bebop figure A on A minor. Bar 40 has G altered dominant and a slight variant on the earlier equivalent bar continuing to a retrograde bebop figure on D minor which offsets the resolution to C major until the second half of the bar. Mm -hmm. 
More target tones, G and G-sharp across the bar line, underlines their importance over these progressions. More melodic thirds, then from an A figure on A minor, which creates a flat five with the F-sharp minor below, onto bebop figures B on D, then A's on E-flat, N-harmonic D-sharp, and E, produce a very satisfying line emphasising tones on the half bar. The one over C also gives a bit of a Lydian flavour. There's a hint of D-sharp D movement being shadowed at the octave, which Jim employs later in the solo. Bars 46 to 8 feature enclosures around the third of C in two octaves. This line works particularly well against the changes, creating some nicely complex extensions. Quote alert 49 to 52. Straddling the bar line 51 to 53 is an E dominant diminished scale. I think the next phrase beautifully reflects Jim's melodicism, formed by four note groups and pairs of tones, all based on thirds. This idea continues over into the second chorus. Many professional musicians, myself included, have been massively affected by the fallout from COVID-19 and a video like this won't make itself. So for the price of a cup of coffee, you can support my channel and help me produce similar content. What you'll get for your contribution is the full transcription including tab plus the specially prepared backing track. What's not to like? Thanks in advance and cheers. A bit more of a Lydian taste with the enclosure notes A and F sharp anticipating the G sharp of the minor 9 chord in bar 59. Then it's time for the next 7th of Jim. This line resolves onto a G the 5th of C underlying the relevance of the G G sharp thing. Irregular groups of notes going nowhere this phrase might have first seem quite random, but on closer inspection it appears to pick out G11 chord tones. Whether by chance or by design, it's fab. Then a bit of ostinato C major minor 6 around target note C lead to a descending blues scale of C in the next section. The C blues scale is answered by another a couple of bars later via a melodic thirds F major bebop A group with a ninth at the top. Bar 69 is a cascading E minor 7 arpeggio in 3 3 2 rhythmic groupings. The A7 bar is an altered dominant of A or tritone sub of E flat 7, but also has elements of the 7th of Jim around a pivot note C. Bar 71 and 2. Lovely chromatic four note figures around D minor 7 chord tones feed into a lick in the next section that if ever there was a phrase that makes Jim's playing instantly recognisable, it's probably this one. and magic coming up. Asymmetrical figures based on C6 featuring pedal G's followed by ascending four note pentatonic shapes with offset eighth note phrasing. 
The idea shifts to B minor 7 across the F sharp minor B7 changes at 75, ending on the E at the top of the phrase. Bar 77 and 78 feature more enclosures, approaches and drop two C voicings. The first half of bar 78 is minor major movement above the E. The second half of the bar is the beginning of more C minor major 6 ostinato figures pedalling on C. The pedalling continues. Using the pedal C's, the phrase then beautifully morphs to accommodate the change to F minor. Difficult to choose a favourite phrase from the solo, but this one coming is definitely on the podium. The climactic point of the solo is reached after climbing lassets of alternating A and B bebop figures skillfully pick out the third of each change. There are a couple of parallel bebop group A's on F sharp and G, similar to those in bars 44 and 5. As before, the F sharp to G movement is echoed up the octave in the next bar. The phrasing of this whole section owes much to Jim's super dexterous left hand third digit. There's a kind of stand and deliver trumpet call moment at the beginning of the section. Could it be a quote? On a more theoretical level, it's a drop two position C major broken chord over an F bass. Bars 91 and 92, similar phrase to an earlier instance, up the octave. More enclosures around the third in C follow. Then Jim's melodicism keeps on coming with a repeat of some earlier third bass groupings. The phrase pivots over a common tone G across the resolution, all great stuff. Bar 97 and 98 is interesting. I've looked at this in loads of different ways, as one might tend to do when putting things under the microscope to this extent. I'm going to stick with the idea that it's made up of a melodic third, G to E, then a stretched out bebop figure A on F, which then slides into a seventh of Jim figure, which if you look at it another way is a phrase based in E major. The second half of which varies a bit from a previous incarnation but still resolves onto G. The last 3 8 note pickup into bar 102 onwards moves through G major then B flat major 7th becoming a 7th of Jim for the final time in G minor. Pedal points usually signal the end is in sight. This phrase is built on an arpeggiated C minor 6 figure which then drops the 6th so it works over the F minor B flat changes. The phrasing also shifts effortlessly from strong to weak beats. Bars 108 to 109 sees mostly chord tone resolutions and a relaxation of tension produced by the previous phrase before the final run-up a C6 arpeggio where the terminal is the second of the chord, wrapping up this sublime solo. It's almost a wrap. 
It was never my intention to change my playing style to match that of Maestro Mullins. I think that would be futile. I just wanted to delve into his toolbox, so to speak, and try to demonstrate what a special artist he is. I have learned a lot, though, about my own playing along the way, so immersive the process has been, and hopefully some of the good stuff has rubbed off on me as well. It's been a joy and a challenge in equal measure. Thanks for sharing the journey. Let's do it again sometime. Goodbye for now, and see you soon. Thank you.